Morning everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. I'm going to share a tutorial today on um, creating some cylinder beads or some tube beads. I've got a few supplies here. I've got some translucent Primo. And this is just the regular translucent, not the frost. Or the white, however it's called. Um, and it's rolled out to my thinnest setting on my pasta machine which on my pasta machine is a one I'm sorry is a nine <laughs> and then I've got two strips that are just rolled out on a regular uh, four uh, this is actually some souffle and it is this one is the lagoon and this one is the robin's egg. The colors are completely up to you. The, the type of clay is completely up to you. This could just as easily be Sculpey 3. Because it's beads. And you don't have to worry about beads breaking quite as much as um, like a piece of jewelry, a pendant or something. Alright, so I'm going to start... I've also got some some uh, glitters, and this is just a poly flake glitter. I think this just came from Walmart or Michaels. I'm not sure. I bought it years ago, and this as well. It's just a blue selection, and then I've got these um, fake snow bits. It's kind of like buffalo snow, but it's just came from the dollar store. Most glitters nowadays, most craft glitters nowadays, are going to be um, heat safe enough to use on your on your clay. Don't try to use glass glitter. Don't try to use any chunky like that glitters. You need a microfine type glitter. Or... <laughs> Like this buffalo snow. Mica flakes work fine. Um, Alright. A little bit of the buffalo snow down there. Just a light sprinkle and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the blue so I can show you um, what I mean by light let's go with the like this color right here because if you get too much glitter on the surface um, your clay is not gonna want to stick to itself and of course I can't find my Just something like that. The next thing you're going to want to do is try to flatten the glitter just the least little bit. That will help you not have pieces that try to stick out when you roll it up. Alright. Now, I'm just going to tear. little bits of the souffle clay I 
and this again is totally random you can lay it down in a sheet if you want Something like that. Then I'm gonna just take my roller and roll over it just a bit. All right. <coughs> We can start to roll it up. And I rolled up that half inch or so of blank translucent clay. And that will kind of be our center. Right, just gonna tightly try to roll it up. going to be air pockets inside this roll so the first thing you want to do is squeeze it together it's also going to elongate the roll we're going to bring it together Matter of fact, let's cut it in half. that again and you can see we've got quite a bit of translucent on either end so just swap it in for end again okay I'm just going to bring it together a bit and give it a bit of a twist. This is totally up to you. It just helps to marble the colors just a little bit, depending on the look you're going for. things that I've been known to do because I don't have a, a bead roller or anything that will section the clay out so just lay a ruler beside it and then cut your beads all right now of course for some cylinder beads I'd want this thinner
that. Now, we'll just take a section. Alright, now when you get to this point, if you find that your clay has warmed up and gotten soft on you, just pop it in the refrigerator for a few minutes. Pop it in the freezer for a few seconds. Just something to warm it, uh, to cool it back down and stiffen it back up a little bit. That was weird, I just happened to be looking through the camera when it did it this time, so I'm not sure what it said. <laughs> As I've said before, if you're worried about the center of your bead, finding the center of your bead, spin it while you're pushing the pin up through there. This will help you keep it centered. Alright, depending on whether you need a small hole or a large hole bead, if you need a larger hole bead, just while you've got the pin in there, roll it on a surface and that will large enlarge your hole if you need it larger just push down a little harder all right all right and i would continue on doing that and um then I would bake them and I don't have a baking rack or anything that would suspend the beads I know a lot of people do but I do have polyfill in my oven and I do have a, a video with my oven set up a um, hundred percent polyfill will not melt it won't stick to the beads um, it won't distort the shape of the beads so you can just lay them in the polyfill and bake them that way all right so i will bake these for an hour and then i'll come back and show them to you all right i just wanted to come back one more time and show you the how the translucent how the translucent clay looks before you bake it You'll notice that it's got a white quality to it. Alright. It will actually turn a little bit more of a yellow than I would like, but that's just the nature of the clay. Um... Alright. Alright. All right, here they are. You can see the large snowflake glitter that we put in there. You can see some of the smaller glitter that we put in there. And of course, after these have been um, sanded and buffed and uh, possibly glazed, it will really, really pick up the glitter and the transparency all right and of course you don't have to use glitter and you don't have to use translucent clay you can definitely do the same technique with just different colors of clay love that all right 
and then I made a, I made a cabochon as well with just the leftover bit all right and this is the um, this is the rolled inclusion technique that I have a tutorial on just making round beads and cabochons but as you can see these cylinder beads tube beads are in no way exact copies of each other they're not perfect I don't try to do perfect <laughs> I have a saying that all you're trying to do is to fool your eye into thinking that, that they're perfect. And whatever you use these on, be it a necklace, a bracelet, um, whatever, they're going to be separated enough that you won't notice that they're not perfect or that they're not the same. Alright, so always keep that in mind when you're working with clay and when you're trying to make jewelry. Or trying to make anything for that matter all an artist does a crafter does is to try to fool the eye to make the the watcher the looker think they're seeing what they're what they're seeing or what they think they're seeing <laughs> all right so I hope that helps um, making two beads making cylinder beads can be simple especially if you have like a bead roller or if you have the equipment to do beads and make them make them similar this is just the technique that I use and um, it works for me so I shall holler at y'all later I'll, I'll be back tomorrow I hope with some um, possibly some tapered cylinder beads Alright, once again, I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.